Hello everyone and welcome to a Space Engineers tutorial on how to filter, sort, and separate items. Also, in this tutorial we will be expanding on the information that I provided in my previous tutorial, how to evenly distribute items. As such, this tutorial assumes that you have already watched that tutorial and are familiar with the methods discussed therein. If not, there is a link available in the description and there should be one on the screen right about now. Let's begin with components. Here we have some grinders that have been nomming away on various trespassers. Om nom nom. Unfortunately, all that heavy armor has left us with more steel plates than we really need. So we wish to separate them out from this chest and send them to be melted down and turned into something more useful, like bullets. To do so, we have a welder, a heavy armor block, and a grinder. The welder continually attempts to build the heavy armor block while the grinder continually attempts to disassemble it. Note that the heavy armor block is not connected to the platform. Grinders and welders will not work on anything attached to their parent structure. You can see the steel plates are being separated out. Here we have a large cargo container. It contains an assortment of items. We wish to separate out steel plates, construction components, interior plates, small steel tubes, and metal grids. The steel plate separation functions identically to the previous example. For the other items, we have a passage. It has been damaged so that it takes 48 small steel tubes, 18 metal grids, 20 construction components, and 2 interior plates to finish construction. Every tick, the welder will take that amount of items out of the chest, and also every tick, the grinder will take that amount of items and place them in its own chest, up to the limits of its flow rate. This is similar to, for the welder, as if you had the correct amount of items in your inventory and tried to weld this by hand. Or for the grinder as if you tried to grind this down to this percentage without any room in your inventory then came back and attempted to grind it further. The flow from the grinder and the cargo container comes to these three welders. Here the small steel tubes are separated Here, the interior plates are separated, and here, the construction components are separated. You'll note that this has been damaged to increase the flow rate of construction components. However, the flow rate of construction components here must not exceed the flow rate of construction components in our original block. Simply put, the amount of construction components required to complete this must be less than the amount of construction components required to complete that. Let's look at this in action. Here we have the chest that the first passage is dumping into, and the other chest that items are being sorted in. Steel plates, interior plates, construction components, and small steel tubes, and our original cargo container that items are being taken out of. There is a downside to this method. You must watch to see when each individual item is completely sorted and then turn them off. Until such time as everything is completely sorted. Let's look at another method. Here we have the same large car container containing the same assortment of items. We wish to separate out metal grids and just metal grids. Unfortunately, metal grids are not the last component required to build any type of block, thus they cannot be separated out using the previous methods. To do so, we have two passages. The first passage has been damaged roughly halfway through the metal grids. The second passage has been constructed so that it doesn't require any more metal grids to be built. 
Thus, the flow rate of the first passage is 48 small steel tubes and 11 metal grids, while the second passage is just 48 small steel tubes. Therefore, these small steel tubes and metal plates are going to end up in this grinder, while these small steel tubes are pulled back through this welder and sent in a loop around. The metal grids are going to end up in this chest, perfectly separated. Let's see this in action. You can see the metal grids being pulled out and put into our small car container. While the small steel tubes stay in the system. This works because welders will pull from the nearest inventory. Each of these small car containers contains 30 steel plates and we have a armor block here. We turn on this welder. You will see that it has pulled out the steel plates from the closest card container. The benefit of this method is that it can be left running indefinitely. The metal grids needed to keep the loop running will be pulled out of this chest and of course we already have the small steel tubes. Though you should be aware of the performance hit from grinders and welders. These three methods can be used to separate out any of the components in the game. Other items are a little bit more difficult to separate. Let's start with ore. The easiest way to deal with ores is to simply not require them to be separated. Here we have an earlier example from our how to evenly distribute items tutorial, where the ore from our miner is being evenly distributed to these four refineries. To that, we've connected the four refineries via conveyors to a connector-collector combination, and then outputted that into this chest, where the refined material is being gathered. The connectors will not pull the ore from the refineries. However, they will pull the ore from the collectors down there. That is something you must take into account when building a system such as this. This is the recommended method for dealing with ores. However, it is not the only method. Let's look at another one. Here is a more complex example. This large cargo container contains an assortment of ores and other items. We wish to separate out the ores. It is connected via the conveyor system to this refinery, from there to this connector-collector combination, which dumps into this cargo container. The connections on either side of this refinery are disabled in an alternating manner. The reason for that is to prevent this connector from pulling items from this chest through the refinery such that when this connection is enabled the refinery will pull the ores out smelt them and when this connection is enabled the connector will pull the refined metals out and send them into this chest without having to worry about grabbing other items you can see here it's been working for a little while We will discuss this rotating device in detail in a moment. Here is an example of this method using assemblers. This assembler takes metal from this cargo container, assembles the item, and puts it in this cargo container without worrying about any other items getting mixed in. As you can see, we are producing construction components and the metal is being taken from this assorted chest. We have also doubled the number of spokes on our rotating device. You can extend the number of assemblers to produce multiple components and have them all go into the same car container. Alternatively, you can keep the flow separate and have each individual item go into its own car container. This is particularly useful for when producing ammo. In 
this method, you can stack multiple assemblers up vertically so that you have a different ratio, such as one ammo belt, one rocket, and three clips, if you had three assemblers here. Now let's look at how to build this rotating device. As we've already mentioned, the purpose of this rotating device is to disable the conveyor connection on either side of the refinery in an alternating manner, making this essentially a conveyor flip-flop. And while it can be built with large blocks, I've chosen to use small blocks in these three examples. And that is what I'm going to show you how to build. There will be an example of a large block version later. To ensure that our conveyor flip-flop functions reliably, we must make sure that our small blocks are well aligned with the large blocks. To do this, we first start by building a 5x5x5 five by five by five block cube of small blocks. This is because small blocks are 0.5 meters, while large blocks are 2.5 meters. However, this does not take into account this trim or this trim on either the small or large blocks. We next add thrusters, a cockpit, a gyroscope, and some reactors to our cube, ensuring that there is one thruster on each corner of the top face of our cube, like this. Here, 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 and here. This will prevent the cube from tilting during the final alignment. We next build two 3x3 segments of large blocks, arranged in an L shape, to serve as a guide. For best results, use partially constructed blocks as these do not contain the trim. Note that the inward corner of our L shape is two blocks down and two blocks over from our conveyor block. We now add two landing gear on the faces of our cube opposite the L shape. We can then pilot our cube using the guides to get us well aligned. Then using our downward thrusters, we make sure that we're well seated. Finally, locking the landing gear. We then remove the large block guides, the cockpit, the thrusters, the gyroscopes, the reactors, and any other blocks we've added to our cube. Then we add two more landing gear and lock them into place. We now have a small block structure that is well aligned with a large block structure. This is useful in any instance where you want a composite of large and small blocks. We can now build our conveyor flip-flop. Start by building three blocks out from our cube. Add a rotor. Then build blocks as close as you can to this conveyor. Next, add a grinder such that the grinding blades are one block from our conveyor block. Now remove the excess blocks. Count how many blocks it is to the center, not including the center block, in this case 8 blocks. Then build that amount of blocks out in the other direction and place a welder. Add a second welder in a trailing position. As this will be rotating clockwise, we add it to the top. You need two welders for every grinder because grinders have slightly longer reach than welders. Connect the welders and grinders via the conveyor system. Ensure that you use large conveyor tubes. Now build a frame around the conveyor tubes. As we will need power, I've chosen to incorporate a refinery into the frame. Note that this frame is five blocks, or the size of one large block. We then extend this out 20 blocks. We now build another set of spokes, ensuring that the welders on this side are opposite the grinders on that side. Next, we clear out an area to make sure that it has plenty of room to rotate. Now we can enable our rotor. It needs to be rotating fast enough that the grinder will disable these blocks without completely deconstructing them. This particular version is rotating at 1.33 RPM. Ensure that you have this device rotating 
before you enable the grinders and welders. I have seen some complaints on the forums about the difficulty of adjusting the settings of a rotor with any degree of precision. Here are some tips. You can adjust the settings of a rotor with a keyboard. Start by pressing either tab, the up or down arrow keys to select the field you wish to adjust. You can then press the left or right arrow keys to adjust the field in a fixed increment. In this manner you can use the mouse to get near the setting you wish and then use the arrow keys to fine tune your setting. In cases where you wish to repeatedly set a rotor to a certain setting, you can have a default rotor. In this case, we wish to set rotor 2's velocity down to 0. We have a default rotor with the velocity set at 0, so we use control click to select both rotors. Then we highlight the velocity field. We use the arrow key to adjust velocity over 1 and then back to the default setting. Now rotor 2 is at 0 velocity. Note that this only works if the default rotor is placed before rotor 2. Now let's combine everything we've learned and throw in a few more tricks for good measure. Here our mining ship is offloading ore. From there the ore flows over to this device. It is a transformer. It allows you to transform the flow rate of ore from the mining ship's 200 liters per tick to a multiple of 500 liters per rotation. This transformer allows you to get around a limitation from our earlier how to evenly distribute items tutorial. Namely, that input must equal output. In this case, our mining ship has four ejectors. Yet, the ore is being evenly distributed to ten refineries via ten ejectors. Let's discuss this transformer in more detail. This transformer consists of a piston. Connected to the piston, we have two connectors facing upwards and three collectors facing downwards. Note, we have more collectors than we do connectors. We also have a power source and a couple of gravity generators. Below the collectors, we have three connectors. Each connector will output twice before ceasing to function. This allows us to buffer the output from our mining ship. On the downward stroke, the collectors will grab the ore from the connectors and these connectors were outputted at their full 250 liters. This allows us to have an output of a multiple of 500 liters. Thus we can evenly distribute the output to 10 50 liter ejectors. Now let's discuss the gravity generators. Each connector will hold the items in its mouth. However, the collectors will not always grab them, especially if they are small items, such as steel plates. To get around that limitation, we've added a couple of gravity generators. A weak gravity field extends just past the collectors and connectors, pulling things inside of the collectors and making them hover in the mouth of the connectors. Like so. The output from our refineries are going into these collectors, which is then stored in this cargo container. From there, the flow splits, first going to these assemblers. Each assembler is producing a different component. All the components are being stored in this cargo container, along with the output from our grinders. Ah, uh, look at the poor private cell get mushed. I enjoy doing that far too much. Here we have a large block version of our conveyor flip-flop. Note, there are no conveyor blocks in this version. Conveyor blocks are required for the small block version. Without them, 
the small block version would not intersect the boundary box of the conveyor system. However, with the large block, the increased size of the conveyor block would prevent this from rotating. Here the output of our grinders and assemblers are filtered into their individual cargo containers. Like so. Also, a massive amount of lag is generated. Here we are producing ammo. We are producing four times as many Gatling gun ammo as the other types. This is a slightly improved version than the previous version, as the grinder grinds this block and this block instead of this block and this block. The clip ammunition is sent to this car container for our personal use. The missile ammunition is loaded onto our blue ship. The Gatling gun ammunition is split. One third goes this way, and two thirds go this way. The two thirds are ejected out here and sent to a series of free floating defense platforms. While the other third is loaded onto our fighter via this connector. Let's talk about this. This is a small block variant of our transformer design. However, it does not work quite as well. The weight of this section here has a greater effect on the alignment of the piston than if it was made out of large blocks. You can make a small block version that works quite well. However, it will take more effort. Which size you choose to use depends on how much material you want to spend and how much space you have available. Though here we're just using this simply to split the ammunition. Thus the piston is really not necessary. That concludes this tutorial. The designs shown in this final example have not been perfected. They exist merely to provide you with some possible applications of the methods discussed in this tutorial. That being said, this world will be available on the Steam Workshop. There should be a link in the description. Also, if you wish to see some more practical examples, you can subscribe to my channel and check out my Let's Play series. Thank you for watching this. Like if you like. Subscribe if you're not, and if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I do read all the comments. I will see you next time!